is something very straightforward. It is August 2022. It's an afternoon paper. You guys did it, did this over, over the afternoon. All right. So we are told here, we are told here, we are told here in the question that they want us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here to do what here to make a consolidated statement of financial position as at 30th June 2022. As at 30th June 2022. Then, ladies and gentlemen, how do I handle this? To consolidate is to put together. To consolidate, I told you, as per IFRS 3, to consolidate is to combine financial statements of related entities. Entities within the same group, their financial statements must be combined, must be combined. So what have they told us here? What they have told us here from the top here is that P Limited, a public limited company, has held a controlling interest in S Limited, another public limited company for one decade. We are told here that P Limited is also, or rather also, has a significant influence over A Limited, a public limited company. All the companies operate in the manufacturing sector. The draft statements of financial position of a P Limited and S Limited as of 30th June 2022 were as shown below. So I can see P here and S there. Great. So what have they told me next, ladies and gentlemen? They've told me additional information here that on 1st July 2012, P Limited acquired 60% of the ordinary shares of S Limited for a cash consideration of 10,000 at acquisition, the fair value of NCI, the non-controlling interest in S Limited was 6,500 million. P Limited wishes to use the fair value method of accounting for goodwill. On 1st July 2012, the fair value of the identifiable net assets in S Limited was 14,000 million. And the retained earnings of S Limited were 1,200 million. The excess in fair value was due to non-depreciable land. They're telling us in note number two on 1st January 2022, P Limited acquired a further 20% interest in S Limited for a cash consideration of 3,000 million. S Limited reported a profit for the year ended 30th June 2022 of shillings 500 million which accrued evenly throughout the year. Note number three, during the year, ended 30th June 2022, P Limited sold goods worth 2,000 million to S Limited. P Limited reports a gross profit margin of 25% on all its sales. Half of these goods were still in the inventory of S Limited as at 30th June 2022. We are told here, that Goodwill was tested for impairment immediately after the additional acquisition of interest in S Limited and was considered impaired by 10%. No impairment had been reported in the previous years. Note number five, they're telling us that on 1st July 2015, P Limited acquired 30% of a 1,000 million ordinary shares of 10% each in A Limited when the retained earnings of A Limited stood at a 1,000 million. A Limited had no other reserves as at 1st of July 2015 when it was being acquired. As at 30th June 2022, the retained earnings of A Limited were 3.5 or rather 3,500 million. No impairment was deemed necessary in respect of the investment in A Limited. None of the group companies declared or paid dividends during the year. And then we are told in number seven, none of the group companies issued additional shares. If I were the one sitting for this paper, I would not have begun by doing part A. What I would have done was to go straight away to part B. So long as I label my questions very well, the examiner allows that. I'll go there and mention question number one. Part B, question number one, part B, question number one, part B. I can see we have got very serious charts here, very serious charts here that I would want us to write. So then what I'll do first of all here is to come and mention, we are doing in this case here, August 2022. August 2022, I can see I still have some space here. August 2022. Question number one, 
boy like that. So question number one, boy, ladies and gentlemen, they want us to do a consolidated statement of financial position. A consolidated statement of financial position. The very first thing that I will do is to recognize the group structure. We have three companies. We have the major company here, which is P, which acquired, we are told at first, 60% of S. 60% of S. And then there was a, a change. There was a change in which, in this case here, they acquired 20% more to give it a total shareholding in S of 80%. A total shareholding in S of 80% to give us 80%, 80%, 80%, to give us 80%, to give us 80%, to give us 80%, okay, to give us 80%, 80% in S, to give us 80% in S. So this is so important to me. This is so important to me. This is so important to me. And then we happen to be having, I should be, instead of using my lap or rather my, Phone to read the question, I should just be sharing here so that all of us can. But I believe all of us have got this paper. All of us have got this paper. So remember, they told us here, they told us here something very nice. On 1st July 2012, P Limited acquired 60%. So at the beginning, we had 60%. And then down here, they came and told us in note two that on 1st January 2022, P Limited stepped up and acquired a further. 20% interest in S limited. So in this case, your 60 plus 20% gives me 80%, gives me 80%. So as and gentlemen, this change is so important to me. 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 So please don't bring other discussions in between here because uh, they are distracting me, right? Right? So in this case here, we have... Uh, this change is so important to me. Remember, when you have 60% of a company, this is more than what here, somebody. This is more than 50%. This is more than 50%. This means what? Control. That P is controlling who? S limited, 60%. And then they came and added 20% to give us what in total? To give us 80%. So meaning that they moved from a position of control to control. So this change is uh, the one that is famously called control to control, control to control, control to control. Remember, we have got three types of changes. We have control to control, control to control, control to control. And then number two, we have in this case here where you move from no control associate to control. Right, And then now we have, uh, when we are moving from control to no control, you're supposed to know how to handle those three changes in the group structure as per your syllabus. Those three changes in the group structure as your syllabus requires you to understand. So this was quite a straightforward. It's control to control. Great. And then, ladies and gentlemen, what they have told us here, what they have told us here is that we also have another company. We have another company. This company is called A. And A, in this case here, we only bought what here? We only bought 30%. A, we bought 30%. We bought 30% of A. So remember, any shareholding you have in a company that falls between what and what? That falls between 20% to 49.99% to 49.99%, right? If you remember this, 20% to 49.99%. If my shareholding falls in this bracket, that shareholding uh, will be called uh, a special name. Who can remember that? They are telling that that automatically will be an associate. That will be an associate. So it means that A is an associated company. A is an associated company, an associated company. Remember, we don't consolidate associate. We don't consolidate associate into the group performance. No. Associate will only have one line. Associate will have just one line in our group financial statements. We'll be talking of investment in associate only. 
But if it's a subsidiary, if we have a subsidiary, and of course a parent, parent and a subsidiary, it is one-on-one. -on -one. You'll be taking figures of the parent plus figures of who? The subsidiary. That is what we call consolidation. Consolidation, according to IFRS 10, we consolidate which companies, parent companies with subsidiary companies, we add them. To consolidate means adding them. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment I've been able to appreciate this, then this is what I shall do now. Having understood the group structure, I will go straight away ahead and mention there the name of, and mention there the name of, mention there the name of, mention there the name of, the name of the group, the name of the parent. So it will be called the P group, P group. The parent is P, right? P group. So once I write P group, then I'll come and write here consolidated, consolidated statement of financial position as at, consolidated the statement of financial position as at, consolidated the statement of financial position as at, of course, they have given us, they have given us the financial statement dates. They have given us the financial statement dates. What do we have here? The financial statement dates are here, 30th June, 2012, 30th June. 2012. 30th June 2012. 30th June 2012. And then you underline. After you underline, of course, you are aware that you shall always start with the non current assets. So you mentioned there non current assets. Non current assets. So non current assets, what do we have here? Non current assets, what do we have here? Non-current assets, you can see they are given to us. Ours is to follow. So we have, ladies and gentlemen, here, what we are calling property, plant, and equipment. Property, plant, and equipment. So we have here property, plant, and who? Equipment. My work is very easy. My work is to come and pick the PPE of the parent that I'm able to see there as 16.875. I say plus the PPE of the subsidiary. Please always, if they give you a column of the associate, when you are consolidating, column of the associate is as a useless as hot air, as hot air. If, for example, listen here, listen here. What normally they will do, what normally they will do, they'll come and give you a column for the parent, a column for the subsidiary, and a column for the associate. When we are consolidating, we normally take the parent and the subsidiary alone. So if there is information about associate, we normally cancel the whole of it so that we don't mix up. Associate results are never consolidated. Associate results are never consolidated. So first of all, are we together up to there? Are we together first of all up to there? Are we together up to here? Associate results are never consolidated. Great. And then remember, if you're using this shortcut approach, if you're using this shortcut approach, never ever should you pick your calculator and then you start punching figures. No, later on we shall be making adjustments. Later on we shall be making adjustments. So please don't tell me that that totally supposed to be no 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 we shall be making later on adjustments now ladies and gentlemen i want to know whether there are students who are able to follow i want to know whether there are students who are able to follow look at the next one investment in s limited thirteen thousand. what do you think am i going to write here under investment in s limited can i say can i pick investment in my own company really Remember the subsidiary and the parent company, economically, they're one entity, substance of a form. We are able to control, in this case, here the subsidiary. Remember what we said in our last class. When you invest in your own children, you can't really keep on counting that investment. When you keep on investing, for example, in your family members, you've taken your wife up to PhD level to study, you've paid fees for her, you can't keep on reminding her that, you know what, I educated you. That will be, ladies and gentlemen, disastrous in your marriage. You're going to break that marriage. Once you start counting investments within the family, then know straight out that you're not a good husband, know straight out that you're not a good what here, wife. That's an investment within family. A family is, if I took her to school, that is as good as myself who went to school. Keep, can't keep on, in this case, yeah, counting investments within the group. So if it's parent subsidiary investments, we don't count them. 
The only thing whenever they talk of investment in a subsidiary that you must account for, which I'm not seeing anybody mentioning there, whenever they bring issues to do with investment in a subsidiary, the whole of that line is strike it off and replace it with goodwill. So you're going to have a line called goodwill replacing. So this one here will replace the investment in the subsidiary. Replaces, you can just write this for your revision, investment in the sub to replace the investment in the sub. So whenever you see goodwill, goodwill, basically you are accounting for that premium. You know, when we invested in the subsidiary, right? When we invest in this subsidiary, fine. The only thing we can account for is the goodwill the amount that we paid over and above, right? Over and above the net assets of uh, this particular subsidiary. So the most important thing for you, know that whenever you see investment in a subsidiary, we shall always strike off that line and we replace it with goodwill. We replace it with goodwill. Great. So, and then of course, goodwill, what I'll do, I'll simply leave it like that. Or I can write here working, I'll do the working later. Which in most cases, if I'm the one doing this exam, I will never even go to do that uh, working. I can leave that empty space like that for the examiner to go and do the working because of what a limitation in terms of time. As I told you yesterday, the students who fail in this paper do not know how to manage time. As much as a, a question could look very easy, you're not supposed to take more than 40 minutes in one question. Never do that. That is the biggest mistake I've always seen students doing. You get a student who goes there, thinks that uh, they have all the time in the world, they play around. In this case here, they take 1.5 hours in one question. And then now when the invigilator rings the bell, not even rings the bell, announces that you know what, one hour left. This lady, this gentleman realizes that they have not done four questions. Now, in this case here, all the air is up there, sweating. And you know, you would rather sweat uh, from any part of the body, but not at the forehead. This is quite, you know, everybody will see, right? So you're sweating so seriously. Do you expect to pass? Time management is critical. Time management is important. So we have goodwill to replace investment in the subsidiary. Then now we continue as gentlemen, look at the next one. The next one, what do we have here? The next one they have told us is investment in the associate. What do you think of investment in A? Investment in A associated company by investing in an associated company, that is a, a far distant relative. Far distant relatives, you must account whatever money you give to them separately. So investment in associate, you'll come and have it here. Investment in associate, will have it here. And of course, in this case, I just mentioned there, working. Great. So you're doing very well. So go to the next one, ladies and gentlemen. The next one, what do we have here? The next one, they're telling us it's financial assets at fair value. So we have here financial assets, financial assets at fair value. Financial assets at fair value. So financial assets at fair value, of course, I can see it is 6190, 6190 plus zero because the subsidiary has got nothing there. So this is a free mark normally for financial assets at fair value, nothing much. I'll just take 6190 at the end there. I get one mark. And remember one mark for us in AFR can make you see places, places that you've never seen before in your life. This one mark can make you see places. Thank you so much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from there, now we have exhausted the non-current assets. So now you'll come and give us another title there, the current assets, the current assets. So under current assets, what do we have? Consolidation is so easy. We are being guided by financial statements given by the examiner. Ours is cut and paste. It's just copying everything, really. And then we survive. We become members of ISPAC. We become members of ISPAC. So current assets, we have inventory. So I'll pick inventory there very first. I'll pick inventory there very first. Inventory for the parent, I can see 99.80. Inventory for the parent, I can see 99.80. And then I'm able to see 69.30. Then from there, after inventory, we go to trade receivables. So we have the receivables. Receivables, what do we have here? Receivables, we have 94.80. Receivables, we have 94.80 plus, uh, I can see 65.80, 65.80, don't pick your calculator, hey, you, 
I can see you don't pick your calculator yet. We're going to make some adjustments. I can see cash and cash equivalent. So we have here cash. So cash, what am I able to see there for cash? So for cash, what I'm able to see there is 54.90, 38.15, 54.90 So I want to believe that you guys are also copying, you're also putting down this content that I'm copying here. I would want to know whether you guys have been able to write up to here. I don't want to leave anybody behind. Have you been able to write up to where I am? I don't want to leave anybody behind at all. I don't want to leave anybody behind. I don't want to leave anybody behind at all. I don't want to leave anybody behind at all. So are we together here, really? Have you been able to write up to where I am? Great, 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 50, great. Now from there, ladies and gentlemen, we have been able to account for our assets. We are accountants. We know that uh, you can't have assets that you can't explain how you financed them, right? So we know that the next thing will be, how did we finance this? To finance this, our finance vehicles are two. It's either you have the owner's equity or you borrowed. So in this case here, come and give us a, a section there for equity and liabilities. Equity and liabilities always start with equity. Start with equity. And I know you guys know the equity components, but really don't even have to know them. Go and read from the financial statements given. Go and read from the financial statements given. They have told us here, Equity, we have ordinary share capital. Equity, we have ordinary share capital, OSC. Who can mention something to me right away? In this case here, quite uh, close range, at close range, who can whisper something about this ordinary share capital at close range? At close, close range means that you are not shouting. Don't shout. Don't shout. Parent only. We use the parent only figure. Parent only. So in this case here, we have the parent only. This is normally a free mark. If you look at Kassenab solution, it's a free mark. So parent only, you go majestically and pick the figure of the parent only. We pick the figure of the parent only. So the figure of the parent only, you can see here, it's 20,000. Don't add the 10,000 there. So this is 20,000. And then I can see share premium. So this I'll take the far end and write 20,000. The same is applicable to the share premium. The share premium is also parent only, parent only. I can never fail AFR. How do I fail AFR among all the papers? I can never. These are the cash flow. I'll tackle these things very fast. I go to the next serious level. Serious level of life because this is not a challenging level. So share premium, we also take what here? The one of the parent only. Then we have retained earnings. Retained earnings, I need a, a working. So this one, I'll not really do anything with it. So retained earnings, I'll simply write the retained earnings and write working there, which I'll never do. If I'm, the, if I'm a student, I'll never do this. So retained earnings, working like that. From there, there is another item under equity that students will always, 99.9% .9 of students will forget some other component of equity. Very important component of equity. Some other, some other students, not even some, but most of the students will always forget something very important here. Will always forget something very important here. Will always forget something very important. Thank you so much. You know, the NCI, the non-controlling interest, the non-controlling interest, the non-controlling interest is a, a permanent source of funds. These are your part, your co-owners of the business. They will not come for their money tomorrow. If they wish to get their money tomorrow, they'll go to the secondary market and sell their shares. So their money is a permanent source of capital. Any finances, which are a permanent source of capital, you must account for them under equity. After that, now we go to liabilities. You guys are bright. I can see so many of you guys say the NCI, NCI. I can see John Moura clapping for me. This is so good. You know, even a pastor like myself, I know when I go to church, when I want to motivate my pastor, right? So even when he says nothing, at times I stand up and clap easily. That way I'm able to motivate him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we shall overcome, right? We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Great. Now we go to the liabilities. So liabilities, what do I have under 
liabilities. Would we have under liabilities very easy? Because I don't have enough space. I'll come under right here. This poor organization of the board, but you guys will understand me, will understand me. This poor organization, I should have begun, but not because I'm not very much organized. You guys will follow what I'm doing. But of course, you guys, I know you are continuing downwards, isn't it? Right? So we have here liabilities. Liabilities, of course, we begin with non-current. We begin with non-current liabilities. So the non-current liabilities, I can see they have given me uh, a loan note, 10% loan notes. So 10% loan notes i'm consolidating so for consolidation what do i do i'm taking the figure of the parent plus the figure of the subsidiary so 10 percent loan notes 10 percent loan notes 10 percent loan notes what do we have here under 10 percent loan notes so 10 percent loan notes i can see them here i can see 10 500 plus 3500 that is normally a free mark it is rarely adjusted it is rarely adjusted it is rarely adjusted so 10,500 plus 3,500. We shall be able to get the answers later. Now, apart from this, do we have, yes, I can see deferred taxation, deferred taxation, deferred tax, take the one of the parent, the one of the parent is 6150, plus the one of the subsidiary, which is uh, 1870, which is 1870. Thank you so much. After deferred tax, those are the only non-current liabilities. Now we can go to the current liabilities. So now we have the current uh, uh, liabilities. Uh, so current liabilities, what do I have here? I have the trade payable. So I have the payable. I'm consolidating. I'm combining. Consolidation is quite a simple term. You're combining. You're adding 5,700 plus 5,700 plus 3,100. And then after payables, ladies and gentlemen, we have the current taxation. The current tax, I'll take the one of the parent, 1645 plus, uh, 1645 plus 735, like tax, I know I'll not even make any adjustments. Ladies and gentlemen, trust you me, when I write like this, and this is something that I would want you to look at the solution given by Kasnem. When I write like this, like this, and then we have the examiner saying that, uh, you know what, time is up. What I'll do, I'll just pick my calculator, press, press things like this, and I'll end up getting more than 50% of those marks given there. And I'll be able to prove to you in a few minutes. And I'm so sure most of the students who are with me here who attempted this exam, I'm so sure most of them, they went to those workings of goodwill, so many workings group, and those workings do not carry even a single mark. So they wasted all their time doing so many workings up there, and then they forgot to write down what is normally marked. This is normally what is marked. Could you guys open those answers that I sent to you yesterday? Are you able to open those answers that I sent to you yesterday? So that you can get, first of all, to bear witness with us that all those, apart from when the examiner tells you, like now he wanted you to do a working for NCI. When he tells you to do a working for NCI, then the NCI will be marked. But all the others will be able to bear. Can somebody open those things and then, uh, of course, make a comment here? Like now, under goodwill. Like, for example, investment in associate. All those workings down there, do they carry any marks? Do they carry any marks? Do they carry any marks? I'll share, I'll share, don't worry, I'll share. I'll share, yes. But for now, the students who have, the students who have, the students who have those, are they able to confirm that they don't carry even a single mark? And that is why the other day, I got a student uh, from an exam, just another semester. So this student met me in uh, one of the gym uh, clubs where I'm a member. And they told me, Mwalimu, sit down here and to buy you. So he started talking, talking, talking. So in group consolidation, this was the first, or rather the last question that I did, all right? This is the last question that I did. But fortunately, I managed to do the workings of goodwill, the workings of retained earnings, but I never wrote any. So I took that gentleman's uh, food, yes, right? But I knew for sure that uh, the gentleman would fail, and he failed, he failed. So after failing, of course, now he was all over saying how Kasneb is bad. Kasneb is never bad. You are the one, in this case, he was not taking time to understand what Kasneb wants. Are we together? 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 Great. 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 
So now we can continue, isn't it? Now we can continue, now we can continue, now we can continue. Thank you so, so much. So let me now go to uh, the notes to the accounts. Now we are looking at the notes to the accounts now. So notes to the accounts, like once you get so much used to these things, you will easily know which notes to the accounts will affect you very fast. Which notes to the accounts will affect you very fast. Like if I'm the one doing this, I know the first thing that I'll be looking for is property plant and equipment. Property plant and equipment. Yes. So for property plant and equipment, I'm told here on 1st July 2012, P Limited acquired 60% of the ordinary shares of S Limited for a cash consideration of 10,000 million at acquisition, the fair value of the non-controlling interest in S Limited was 6,500 million. P Limited wishes to use the fair value method of accounting for goodwill. On 1st July 2012, the fair value of identifiable net assets was 14. We shall be using this 14,000. Very important, but I would not want to start with this because this will really waste my time. The thing that I would want to do very fast here, look at note number three. During the year ended 30th June 2012, P Limited sold goods worth 2,000 million to S Limited. P Limited reports a gross profit margin of 25% in all its sales. Half of these goods were still in inventory of S Limited and as at 30th June 2020, as at 30th June 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, I know first of all that if I had a consolidated income statement, these goods which were sold in between the group, what we call the intra or inter sales, internal sales, these are fake sales. And I always keep on giving you the example of my wife. So if, for example, I'm a good husband, uh, honestly, and then we have my wife, for example, joining RCM Online College. And assuming that RCM Online College is a university where I'm able to get like 100,000 in form of fees. So if my madam pays, for example, like fees for three trimesters, 300,000, she pays to RCM Online College. When I'm consolidating, when I'm looking at my financial performance, will I count these 300,000 fees that was paid by my wife to my college? as genuine fees. Internal sales, can internal sales really be genuine? Can internal sales really be genuine? Can someone talk to me? Internal sales, can it be genuine? No, that's fake sales. So, and any fake sales must be eliminated. So when you talk of the parent and subsidiary doing business, please, Parent and subsidiary doing business, then whatever business they do between themselves, between themselves, then that automatically will be fake sales. Fake sales, which has to be subtracted from the income statement. But because we don't have an income statement here, I know whenever I've got this fake sale, what will affect my balance sheet, what will affect my statement of financial position is what we call the unrealized profit and realize profit. Is there somebody who can give me the formula of calculating unrealized profit? Who is able to remember the formula of calculating the unrealized profit UPS? You must write this in full. UPS stands for unrealized profit. Is there anybody who remembers the formula of getting unrealized profit? Unrealized profit. Unrealized profit. Unrealized profit. Unrealized profit. Unrealized profit. Unrealized profit. Rotich, you have to type, eh? You have to type there. Thank you so much, John. John tells me that uh, Mwalimu to get a UPS, take the profit margin given. Take the profit margin given. Take the profit margin given times the name of uh, one of our sisters. The name of one of our sisters, one of our sisters is called Rispa. Ris, Ris. So you take the profit margin times Remaining uh, intra sales, uh, remaining uh, intra sales. Not all fake sales, not all fake sales, my own, not all fake sales, but remaining uh, fake sales. Remaining, you know, if these fake sales, which were sold in this case here to the subsidiary, if the subsidiary was able by the end of the year to sell all of them to third parties, then the group will realize all the profit. The mistake which happened is that uh, the parent sold to the subsidiary. And then the subsidiary happens still to be having those goods within its stock. You know, the parent, when they sold, 
they recognized the prophet, but now they recognized a prophet from who? From a subsidiary. And that prophet is still within the group, right? Listen, whenever we talk over UPS, UPS will always be computed by taking profit margin times the remaining intra sales or remaining fake sales, remaining fake sales. This examiner was quite a lenient examiner. If I'm the one who was given a chance of setting this paper, I can't give profit margin directly. Imagine he gave you, he gave you the profit margin directly. This must be a fake examiner, a fake examiner. He should have given you guys profit markup and then see whether students will be able to change profit markup to profit margin. So here he gave you profit margin. So he's a good examiner. I know from the student's perspective, he's a good examiner. But now if I was to evaluate him as an examiner myself, I can tell you straight away that these are fake examiner. These are fake examiner. All right. So in this case here, we are told here, no three. You can see he gave us, he gave us a gross profit margin of 25, 25%. Remember the fake sales in total, they were 2,000. But we are told here half of these goods were still in inventory. So the remaining fake sales will be a thousand, will be a thousand because half had been sold. Half had been sold. So in this case, it will be uh, the profit margin. The profit margin is 25 over 100 times a half of the fake sales, 2000. So is there somebody who can tell me what this figure will be? 25% times a half of 2000. We have John Mudiani saying that this is 250. This is 250. Thank you very much. Now, once I get this unrealized profit on stock, where should I deduct this from? Where should I remove it from? Once I get this UPS, once I get this UPS, NIC, no, no, inventory, inventory. It means that the group inventory is overstated. According to international accounting standard number two, inventory should never be having any profit on it. So here we have a situation where the subsidiary, the subsidiary's cost of sale is overstated because of the, 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 the inventory. Uh, or rather inventory, inventory is overstated because this inventory has got what your profit in it. So go to inventory here, go to inventory here, and then you deduct here 250. So this one, you can even go ahead and give us, you can even go ahead and give us the figure we just posted here because we know there is nothing else again will affect inventory. Yeah, we know that there is some, nothing else that will affect inventory again. So is there somebody who can come and give me the figure of inventory? 9980 plus 6930. Minus 250, is there somebody who can give me that figure? I'm subtracting this because it's fake profit that is built within. So Semeani is giving me 16, 650, 660. 16, 16, 16, 600, 16, 600, and 60, like that, 16, 600, and 60. Thank you very much, Rosso Kumu. Thank you very much, Rosso Kumu. Now, after that, ladies and gentlemen, after that, ladies and gentlemen, what I will do, I'll go to the next. So in the next, what are they telling us? In this next item, what are they telling us? They are telling us here, goodwill was tested for impairment immediately after. We shall be able to see this later. We shall be able to see this later. Note five is about, is about, is about investment in associate. Ah, investment in associate. This is a straight thing. Look at note number five. On 1st July 2015, P Limited acquired 30% over a million, uh, a thousand million ordinary shares of shillings 10 each in A Limited when the retained earnings of A Limited stood at a thousand. A Limited had no other reserves as at 1st July 2015. As at 30th June 2022, the retained earnings of A Limited were 3,500. No impairment was deemed necessary in respect to the investment in A Limited. Could you kindly do a working for me for this associate company? So mention their working investment in associate company. Investment in associate company. Investment in associate company. 
So investment in associate company, very easy, very easy. So we have here investment in associate company. So investment in associate company, two lines, basically, two lines, basically. So we shall look at the investment on acquisition, investment at acquisition. Is there somebody who can tell me when we acquired this associate, these 30% shares in the associate, how much do we pay ourselves in total? How much was paid? 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 Let me listen here. Let me listen here. How much was paid? How much was paid when we were acquiring this? investment in the associated company how much was paid is there somebody who can see that figure how comes there is nobody who is talking to me how much was paid how much was paid how much was paid when you were acquiring when you were acquiring how much was paid let, let me listen here let me listen here let me listen here let me listen here really Oops, the students who in this case here joined our group late, nobody sharing with them the nobody sharing with them really the Zoom link. Somebody should be assisting me. Give these people the Zoom link. Whenever you see people joining there in that group of ours, they're basically interested in this class. Give them the link. We are partners in this business. We are partners in this business. We are partners in this business. You and I are partners. We must help these students. Great. So we are sorting out those students. Great, 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 great. Thank you. So I can see what they're telling me. You can see here, investment in A Limited was 36, what year? 50. Investment in the associated company was 3650. So the investment, the cost, the investment at acquisition was 3650. And then you know that for uh, associated company, for us, the company, basically, what do we do? It will only increase, this amount will increase by what we call the post-acquisition profit. So give us share of pop, share of pop. Pop, uh, if I've never taught you before, pop stands for post-acquisition profit. Post-acquisition profit. And remember for the associate, the post-acquisition profit is normally given by movement in retained earnings. Movement in retained earnings. Movement in retained earnings. Movement in retained earnings. You take the end of year retained earnings minus the pre-acquisition. Or where are we getting the 3650 from? The 3650 from the 3650 is here. It's given normally. It's given here. You can see it's here. Investments in A limited 3650. A is the associate. A is the associate. A is the associate 3650. So I'm trying to explain here this concept of what here pop. For the pop of associate is normally simplified. The post acquisition profit of the associate is normally very simple. Normally very simple. It's here. We are told in note number five. On 1st July 2015, P Limited acquired 30% shares of shillings 10 each in A Limited when the retained earnings of A Limited stood at 1,000. So you can imagine in this case here, the retained earnings at acquisition were 1,000. A Limited had no other reserves as at 1st July 2015. As at 30th June 2022, the retained earnings of A Limited stood at how much? At 35. So we can see a growth in retained earnings. That growth in retained earnings for associated companies, there is nothing to worry. For associated companies, the POP, post-acquisition profit basically, will be the 
retained earnings that we have here on the reporting date minus retained earnings at acquisition. So I'll be talking of 3,500 minus 1,000. 3,500 minus 1,000. 3,500 minus 1,000. The whole of this does not belong to us. Ours is only 30%. Hours is only 30%. Hours is only 30%. So can somebody give me this minus this times 30%? So according to Semeyan, we have 750, 750. And then if you read this question very nicely, 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 they are telling us, you know, the other thing that would have affected us is the impairment loss. There is no impairment that was deemed necessary in respect of the investment in A Limited. So that is it. So please add for us, give us the total here. Give us the total here. This will be the investment, investment in associate, in associate at reporting, at reporting. Is there somebody who can give me this total here? Is there somebody who can, ah, Moru gives me 4,400. 4,400, this is what you bring here. Investment in associate at the very corner, 4,400 like that. 4,400 like that. Great. Now from there, ladies and gentlemen, I would want to look at the worthness of the subsidiary. I would want to look at the worthness of the subsidiary. Now this is when we have begun our class. Otherwise, you've not been doing anything. It has been a lot of nothing. Right now, here we are. Now, this is where I would want to beg for your greatest level of what here? Attention. The worthiness of the subsidiary. Is our subsidiary worthy? So can I rub this? 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 Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The worthiness of who? The subsidiary S. Good question there. You know, these are thousand million shares. They haven't given you their market price. That 10 you are seeing there is a par value. And you see, when you go to buy, when you go to buy a subsidiary, you're buying their shares at the market value. The market value in most cases will not be the same as what here, will not be the same as the par value. So you have to be very careful. Investment in associate rows, you pick the figure given the balance sheet to be your investment at acquisition. You pick the figure given the balance sheet as your investment at acquisition. You'll be seeing this as we get along, as we get along. Now we are looking at the worthiness, the worthiness, the worthiness of the subsidiary company. Now, who can talk to me this afternoon? How do I get to measure the worthiness of this subsidiary? Which metric should I compute? Which metric should I compute? Which metric should I compute to be able to measure the worthiness of this subsidiary? Which metric? Goodwill, no. No. Net assets, thank you very much. Net assets, which is given by the equity as Juliet is telling us. So in this case, I would want to get the net assets, would want to get the net assets of the sub subsidiary, which as Juliet is telling us, this will be exactly the equity elements, the equity elements. So under net assets, uh, we basically look at uh, four things generally. Is there somebody who can enumerate for us, the, who can itemize for us the lists of those items under net assets that we must always remember? Is there somebody who can give us a list of the net asset items? Ordinary share capital. Here we have share premium. Retained earnings, fair value adjustment. You guys are bright for items. So we have here, I'll come and write them down here. So we have here, we have here the ordinary share capital. That's the first thing. Then number two, we have the share premium. Number two, we have the share premium. Number three, we have the retained earnings. Retained earnings. And then number four, we have the fair value adjustment. Please write these things in full. For me, I don't have to write them in full. I'm really used to them. Please write them in full, like ordinary share capital, share premium, retained earnings, fair value adjustment. Fair value adjustment. Have you written them? 
of course, fair value adjustment will have will have also a depreciation on it. Eh? But here, I'm quite aware that the item which was done revaluation is land, which is non-depreciable. So I don't want to include depreciation here. So first of all, have you been able to write this? I would want to know whether you are together. Please put a thumbs up. If you're together, put a thumbs up or say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Put a thumbs up. Stroke. Say yes. Or at times, in this case, you smile. Eh? At times, you can also put an emoji that smiles, especially if you are a lady, isn't it? No, I'm joking. You guys are my daughters. <laughs> you know, we are told that a good teacher must always try to ensure that students laugh in between. Yes, they laugh in between the session. We are not supposed to take this as a very hard, as a very hard, as a very hard course, really. It's not a hard thing. This is a very easy thing. If a teacher becomes very serious, you scare students. Now students will think that this consultation is a very hard thing. No, the simplest topic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So for my case, unfortunately, I have to rub this, but fortunately I have good students who will be able to give me these items when I want them. Ladies and gentlemen, please, here we are. So here I'm going to consider two things. I'm going to consider two things. Which things am I going to consider here? Which things am I going to consider? Column titles, I'm going to have two of them. 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 Which columns here? At the date of acquisition, someone told me, Mwalimu, use what you used when you were teaching as intermediate level. At the date of acquisition and at the date of financial statements. But now remember, this is what some of my, stu some of my students forgot. The change. This time around here, we have the change. We have the change. So we have here the date of acquisition, date of acquisition, date of acquisition, and then we have date of what year? Financial statement. Kirua. Now look at this now, Kili. Now we are not talking here, but unless you are asking a question. You know, I'm trying to balance so many things at the same time. It's not easy for a man to multitask. It's not easy for a man to multitask. So you only go there when you are asking quick questions. Let's agree on that when you're asking questions there. Otherwise, you will distract this man in a very bad way. So now we have here date of acquisition. We have uh, some date when we had a change. And then we have date of what your financial statements. Is there somebody who is able to remember that in between the year we had a change in our shareholding? Is there anybody who is able to remember from our group structure that we used to have 60% and then we bought some 20%? These students have forgotten that. These students have forgotten that. These students have forgotten that. There is, there, there is a change in between. Let me project the question again. Let me project the question again. Let me project this question again. Let me project this question again. Let me project this question again. Now, ladies and gentlemen, look at note two. On 1st January 2022, P Limited acquired a further 20% interest in S Limited for a cash consideration of three. So a father, and these dates are very important. Whenever there is a change, you must always give us the dates. They're very important. Eh? This first January, 2022. First January, 2022. So this is first January. This is first January, 2022, when we had the change. Uh -huh. What about the date of the financial statements? What about the date of the financial statements? What about the date of the financial statements? The date of the financial statements, is there anybody who is able to read the date of the financial statements there? Is there anybody who knows how to read the date of the financial statements? Is there anybody who knows how to read the date of the financial statements? It's given up there. On top of the financial statements, we are told here, P and S Limited as a 30th June 2022. 30th June 2022. 30th June. 2022, 30th June, here, yeah. 30th June, 2022. How about the date of acquisition? Yeah, whenever there is a change, it's important to put these dates. Date of acquisition was 1st of January, 2012. 1st January, 2012 is when we made the very first acquisition. We need a prayer break to pray, yes. How many minutes, Malim? How many minutes good to respect a religion? How many minutes? How many minutes prayer time? How many minutes prayer time? How many minutes? So that when I come, I'll be able to show you consolidation. You know, I'm quite lucky because I deal, I handle group consolidation at my workplace. The moment I, did, I do three questions of group consolidation, you'll be sorted out. You'll be sorted out. So let's have a, a three minutes break. First July, 
10 minutes no malim 10 minutes will be too much because i have another class 10 minutes 5 minutes please malim 5 minutes we shall come back at 5:15 please 5:15 first july first july we shall come back at 5:15 malim please thank you very much 5 minutes yes 5 minutes yes so which stage are we in we are at a very nice stage where we are assessing the worthiness of this subsidiary was it really worth our investment? We don't do the same for the associate. Associate is normally an easy one, but now here is a gentleman. When it comes to subsidiary, you must always have this working where you assess the worthiness of your subsidiary. And how do you do it? So you have uh, at the date of acquisition, we acquired this subsidiary on 1st July, 2012. And then 60% of it, 60% of it. And then here we added what here, 20% increase. It could either be upward or downward, right? And then now it continued like that. So we had 80% here, 80% there, like that. Now listen and listen to me very well. Let's populate this table. We start with ordinary share capital. Ordinary share capital, remember, don't pick the one of the parent. Here we are looking at net assets of the subsidiary. So net assets of the subsidiary, is there somebody who is able to see the net assets of the subsidiary? Is there somebody who is able to see the ordinary share capital of the subsidiary? We can see it is 10,000. So it is 10,000. What do you know about, uh, about uh, net assets, about ordinary share capital? It doesn't keep on dancing. This one here will always be the same. Ordinary share capital will always be the same like that. From there, we have share premium. Share premium of the subsidiary, the same, does not keep on changing. Share premium does not keep on changing. You only pick it. Great, great. We only pick it. We only pick it. So in this case here, we have, ladies and gentlemen, the share premium don't pick. You know, Satan is real. And that is why I would want, like my brother here went to pray. I would want us to be praying quite a lot. You'll have a student who understands this concept. And then they'll come and pick share premium of the parent. And then they tell you it's 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. And then they call you for a soda. It's a premium of the subsidiary, 2,400. So this 2,400 is what we shall have here throughout. So we have 2,400 there, 2,400 there. And then we have, ladies and gentlemen, retained the earnings. Retained the earnings normally will be given, retained the earnings at acquisition and retained the earnings at the date of reporting here. So like retained the earnings of the subsidiary on acquisition, what do we have as our retained earnings here on acquisition? Very easy. Retained earnings on acquisition, ladies and gentlemen. What have they told us about retained earnings on acquisition? They've told us here. On 1st July 2012, P Limited acquired 60% of the ordinary shares of S Limited for a cash consideration of 10,000. At acquisition, the fair value of NCI in S Limited was 6,500 million. P Limited wishes to use the fair value method of accounting for goodwill. On 1st July 2012, the fair value of the identifiable net assets in S Limited was 14,000. And the retained earnings of S Limited was what here, somebody? 1,200. 1,200. So you can see retained earnings at the date of acquisition at DOA was 1,200. And retained earnings, the worst mistake you can ever do. I retained earnings, the worst mistake you can ever do is to come and give us 1,200. No, 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 no. Retained earnings at acquisition were 1,200. And then they'll give you retained earnings at the date of uh, financial reports, at the date of financial statements. At the date of financial statements, what are the retained earnings that they have given us here? They have told us here, you can see retained earnings as at the reporting date. Retained earnings as at the reporting date. I'm trying to look for the yes. Don't pick the one of the parent. You're looking at net, so 59.50. Thank you so much, 59.50. So here we have 59.50, 59.50, 59 And then now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, what will I do to be able to get these retained earnings as at 1st of January, 2022? I would want to know the profit for the whole year, the profit of the subsidiary for the whole year. The profit of the subsidiary, I've seen your question, I'll address it right now. The profit of the subsidiary for the whole year, first of all, for the whole year, first of all, for the whole year, first of all, the profit of this subsidiary, we are told here, 
on 1st January 2022, P Limited acquired a further 20% interest in S Limited for a cash consideration of shillings 3,000 million. S Limited reported a profit for the year 30th June. 30th June 2022, we reported a profit of how much? 500 that accrued evenly throughout the year, throughout the year. So in this case here, for the year ending here, these guys, uh, the subsidiary, made a profit of how much? 500. Now, could you kindly count for me the number of months which are in between here? And this counting should be done by men. I don't trust ladies whenever it comes to issues of counting months. They'll never get it right. You can even, you'll even see here. They'll never get it right. Like Chris Pass, I can see Chris Pass, yes. Ah, Miss Charity, you got it right. <laughs> count slowly, count slowly. <laughs> so we have the whole of January. Oh, this is very easy. No one, they got it, all of them. In most cases, with my experience, whenever we count with them here, they always miss the correct number. They always miss that. But this is quite simple, I think, because it's January all the way to June. So it is six months. So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, listen, for the year ended here, these guys here did a profit over how much? Did a profit over 500. So then what is the profit for six months? Profit for six months will be half of this. So it will be 500 times six over 12, which equals what here, somebody? 250, isn't it? Violence, 250, which equals 250, equals 250. And remember, they have told us that this profit accrues evenly, accrues evenly. What does that mean? That confuses very many students. Assuming I had a number line, assuming I had a number line, which in this case is going to 30th 06, 2022, like that, all right? Now, this year that is ending on this date will start on which date? On which date? Must have started on which date? What was the start date of this year? What was the start date of this year? What was the start date of this year? Yeah, it's fast. It's the following day, isn't it? So it's first July 2021 because it's last year. So if in this case here, the total retained earnings here were 59.50, and then the whole year, these guys made a profit of 500, and there were no dividends declared, it means that all these 500 here was accumulated and put in this basket. What if then I would want to get the retained earnings at the beginning of the year? What if I want to get the retained earnings at the beginning of the year? Can somebody tell me? If I want to get retained earnings at the beginning of the year, what should I do? What should I do? I'll take 59.50. 59.50. I less the 500. So, and I saw so many of you guys were using here 54.50. But now remember, remember, from here to here, we only have six months. So this is coming in between. So you guys should have subtracted 250 here. You should have subtracted 250 to get the retained earnings at the middle of the year. So what is 59.50 minus 250? What is 59.50 minus 250? I put this figure here. 59.50 minus 250, I put this figure here. 5,700, thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this guy now here, he made me happy. And this is why he was able to score very many students a big goal. This is why many students in this case here were not able to pass in this paper. Because this guy came and gave us the total net assets at acquisition. He came and gave us the total net assets at acquisition. The students who are in my class have done this kind of a question for you, where they gave us total net assets at acquisition. Total net assets at acquisition, they gave us. They gave us C note number one, C note number one. They told us here, on 1st of July, when we were acquiring this P, P was acquiring S Limited, on 1st July 2012, the fair value of the identifiable net assets of S was 14,000. All right, 14,000. And then they came and told us that the excess in fair value was due to non-depreciable land. So ladies and gentlemen, it means that uh, if you come and add the total here, total here, total net assets, should be 14,000. So then could you kindly tell me the balancing figure, which is a land value, the excess there is land. So 14,000 minus this, minus this, minus this. They're telling me it's four, 400, isn't it? 400, 400. And what do you know about fair value adjustment? The figure will always be the same. 
the figure will always be the same. The figure will always be the same. So then could you kindly give me the total year as at this date? Add these four items. Please give me the total as at this date. As at this date. Please give me the total as at this date. What do we have? What do we have there? Can somebody give us the total here? The total as at this date. What do we have here? They are not talking to me. 18,500. 18,500. Uh-huh. The last one are the financial statements date. Could you kindly now here? I'll not take more than five minutes. Once I've reached here, I'll take a maximum of five minutes to complete everything. 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 I'll take less than five minutes actually. So could you kindly give me the total here? According to Chow, it's 18,750. It's 18,750. Now, this is very interesting because I'm going to have two pops. The first pop will be this. This is pop one, pop one, and then you're going to have pop two. Now, here you have got two papas, two of them. So please come and give me the first post acquisition profit. The first. that aren't changing, figures that aren't changing, figures that aren't changing. They're changing. So the first pop, you are taking this 18,500 minus 14,000. 18,500 minus 14,000. What are we able to get there? According to charity, we have 4,500. So please, once you get this first pop, Give it to the owners of the business. The first pop shall be given to the owners of the business. Remember, from here all the way up to here before the change, the parent had 60%. The parent had 60%. And the NCA had 40%. So this pop one, this pop one, pop one, share it out. 4,500, give the parent. Give the parent. We are giving the parent 60% and they give NCI 40% because the two must add to 100%. So the parent should be given what amount? The parent should be given what amount? The parent should be given what amount? 2,700, eh? The parent should be given 2,700. How about uh, NCI 40% of 4,500? 40 40% of 4,500. So NCI is going to get 1,800. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is PAP1. And please, with your permission, I should be able to wrap this section for PAP1 to create space for PAP2. PAP2. PAP stands for post-acquisition profit. Post-acquisition profit. How did you get? 5,700. 5,700, we took, if you remember, if you remember, we had some 500 profit, which was generated by, which was generated by the subsidiary for the whole year. But you see between here and here, we have how many months? Six months. So we prorated the 500 uh, using that six over 12, which gave us 250. We went backward. So we took 950 minus 250 to get this. To get this. Great. So can I rub this kindly? Can I rub this pop one working for me to create space for pop two? For pop two. Can I rub this? Can I rub? They're not talking to me. They're not talking to me. I don't know why. I don't know why. Yes. Thank you very much. So come right away and look at PAP 2. Right away, give us PAP 2 now. So PAP 2, what do we have here? PAP 2. So PAP 2, we have here 18,750 minus 18,500. Could you kindly give me a figure? Ah, they're giving me a figure of 250. Thank you so much. So could you kindly go ahead and share this PAP? Share of PAP 2 of part two, 250. Tell me the parent will be getting what percentage? Tell me the parent will be getting what percentage here? Tell me the parent will be getting what percentage? The parent will be getting what percentage now? The parent, I want the parent, parent percentage. In terms of percentage, is it 200? Remember we got 220 now more, 20 more. So the parent will be getting 80%. And then of course the balancing figure will be NCI, who will get 20%. So then now you'll be able to apply 80% of 250 gives me how much? 80% of 250 gives me how much? 80% of 200. And now the other guy gets what here? Gets 50 like that. Gets 50 like that. Great. 
great. Once I finish this, I told you five minutes. Five minutes. Once I finish this, I'll now give you the figure of goodwill without thinking. Once I finish this, for goodwill computation, I would want you to remember this figure. For goodwill computation, this is the figure that I will use. The net assets at the date of acquisition. So goodwill. Computation of goodwill at acquisition. Goodwill at acquisition. Goodwill at acquisition. So then we have here goodwill. So goodwill, what do we have as goodwill? Very easy. Remember I told you, according to RFRS3, business combinations, to get goodwill, you take total consideration minus net assets at acquisition. Anytime they want you to get goodwill, you take the total consideration, total consideration minus net assets at acquisition. This is the formula given by IFRS 3. And then I'll remember that when you are looking for total consideration, you have got two owners of this business. We happen to be having, ladies and gentlemen, the parent company. So consideration of parent company. And then we have consideration of NCI, what we call the fair value of NCI at acquisition, at acquisition, fair value of NCI at acquisition. Abracadabra, could you kindly tell me at the very beginning, at the very beginning, what is the consideration that was paid by the parent? Not when they increased their shares by 10,000. No. We are told here on 1st July 2012, P Limited acquired 60% of the ordinary shares of S Limited for a cash consideration of shillings 10,000. Cash consideration 10,000. So this is what the parent paid. This is what the parent paid. So the parent in this case here paid 10,000. The parent paid 10,000. And then as a gentleman, we have the NCI. They also came and they gave us some money to make 100% of the subsidiary using the full method. Using the full method, we are told here that the parent, or rather the NCI, we are told here that eh, the fair value of the NCI was 6,500. 6, so we have 6,500. So the total consideration is 16,500. This is the total consideration. The total consideration, 16,500. Then come and less net assets, net assets at acquisition. Net assets at acquisition, ladies and gentlemen, is there somebody who can remember the net assets that we had from our tables at acquisition? Is there somebody who can remember the net assets we had? 14,000. I even circled it for you. 14,000. So please come there and subtract this. What you'll get here is called the goodwill. Goodwill on acquisition. Goodwill on acquisition, Shigana. Goodwill on acquisition, if you subtract. They are saying it is 2,500, 2,500. Remember this time round, there is impairment. This time round, there is impairment. What is the percentage of impairment? 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 They told us somewhere, the percentage of impairment is 10%, is 10%. The percentage of impairment is 10%. So you'll come here, impairment loss is 10%, 10% of 2,500, which gives me 250. So please subtract there. 2,500 minus 250 gives us 2,250 if I'm correct. So this is the goodwill, goodwill at DOF, at DOF, at date of financial statements. Goodwill at reporting 2,250. So please look for where you have goodwill. Where you have goodwill, please, in your statement of financial position, put 2,500 there. Uongo, Uongo, it is 2,250. It is 2,250. It is 2,250. Have you done that? Have you done that? Please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you have done exactly what you have done, said you to do, told you to do. So I know the biggest mistake that students here do whenever we have change, 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 change in between, you will get students telling you take consideration of the parent here plus the 3,000. No, 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 no. 
we take the very original the very original the very original the very original very original so we have here 2250 the thumbs up i can see there there are very few i don't know whether students are very tired or you know, they should be able to say even thumbs down repeat more clarification on about net assets are the date yeah, net, net assets are as at the date of what year acquisition. The figure that I circled for you, the 14,000. 14,000. Because at first, we normally compute goodwill on acquisition. So it has to be goodwill on acquisition. Goodwill on acquisition. Now, I would want in this case here, you guys, to make reference to the solution that I gave to you. Check what amount of goodwill do they have there? The solution that I gave to you. What amount of goodwill? What amount of goodwill? What amount of goodwill is given there? This solution that I gave to you coming from Upper Hill. Zulfa says 2250. 2250. So and you can see the only thing they'll do is to give you one mark for the answer. Nothing for computation. Nothing for computation. 2250. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, with your permission, then I should be able to go to the last figure, which is which one here, somebody. We now have only one, I think one, no, two workings, eh? two of them, two of them, two of them. So we go to NCI. Let's look at NCI, NCI. Let's get NCI. Non-controlling interests. Non controlling interests. Yes, I'll be able to do that. I'll be able to do that. I'll be able to do that. Great. 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 So now we are looking at, we are looking at NCI. We are looking at NCI working. So here for NCI, there is always a free mark. The NCI at acquisition, where we are beginning from. NCI, at, is there somebody who is able to see the NCI? Uh, these guys are not talking to me, imagine at all. I even don't know now how to teach them because they're not talking to me. Now they're not talking to me at all. Now they're not talking to me at all. Is there somebody who is able to see the value of NCI at acquisition? NCI at acquisition. NCI, I can see the figure myself very fast. Is there anybody who is able to see this NCI at acquisition? Oh yeah, I'm alone. Oh, yeah, I'm alone. NCI at acquisition. NCI at acquisition, what do we have here? 6,500, you're right. 6,500, you're right. So NCI at acquisition. NCI at acquisition. So we have here NCI at acquisition. It is 6,500. Now, remember, we have got three dates, which are very, very important. So first of all, come and give us share of PAP1. Share of PAP1. Share of PAP1. So this PAP1 is taking up as a up to when? It is taking as a up to, up to 1st January 2022, remember. Give us that share. Is there somebody who can remember the share of NCI? The share of NCI of PAP1. The share of NCI's PAP1. PAP1, NCI is PAP1. These guys are not seeing that working. NCI, NCI's share, NCI's share of PAP1, it is 1,800. It is 1,800. So then, ladies and gentlemen, please come and give me the total NCI. Give me the total NCI as at, as at, as at this date before the change. Is there somebody who can give me this? So you add the two. These are marks which are flowing there. 8300, 8300. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would want you to talk to me this afternoon. Look at me straight in the eye. Straight in the eye. No shyness here. Who can talk to me as regards to this particular date? What happened to our NCI? Did our NCI grow? Or did it go down? What happened with our NCI on this date? It went down. It went down. It reduced, isn't it? So then give us, give us the reduction in NCI. Proportionate. Proportionate. Reduction. Proportionate. Reduction. 
in NCI because you know the parent company increased its shareholding to 80%. It increased its shareholding to 80%. So the parent went up to 80%, but the NCI, NCI remember, remember initially, initially, let me just show you something here. Initially, NCI was 40%. After change, after change, after change, NCI went to which figure after change? After change, after change, 20%. <laughs> you guys are right because you see, basically the parent uh, snatched 20% from them. The parent, the parent took 20%. The parent bought 20%. So they must have snatched the 20% from NCI. So after the change, we have 20%. And remember, this is something that I taught you very well. Whenever we talk of proportionate reduction in NCI, remember the it is 40%. This is the initial. So you take 40%, you talk over old minus new. All over old is gold. Old is gold. This is a very important uh, formula. Old minus new all over old times what we have here, 8,300, 8,300. So can somebody give me this figure? Can somebody give me this figure? Can somebody give me this figure very fast? Remember here, first of all, you have to say 40% minus 20. You don't even have to put the percentages really. You can ignore them because they'll cancel out. So it's 40 minus 20. Whatever we get divided by 40, whatever we get times 8,300. So Lenny tells me it is 4150. Lenny tells me it is 4150 like that. So subtract. So once you subtract, this is the reduction. There are other two things that so many students forgot in this semester. The two great things. After the proportionate reduction, remember we have uh, NCIs now for the subsequent period, for the subsequent period, right? So in this case here, we have NCI share, NCI share of PAP2, of PAP2, PAPA2. Is there somebody who can remember PAPA2 for NCI? You know, now we are here, now we are trying to go to the other side, right? If the percentage was a, uh, if the percentage was 50, please. Oh, I know now what you guys are saying. NCI share of PAP2 was 50. There is again something that some of my best students here forgot. That uh, we have here share of, share of impairment loss of goodwill. Impairment loss of goodwill. Impairment loss of goodwill. Share of impairment loss of goodwill. Impairment loss of goodwill. Impairment loss of goodwill. So remember the impairment loss, what was it by? It was 250 or something. The total impairment loss of goodwill. The total impairment loss of goodwill was 250, isn't it? 250. So remember out of these 250, the parent will consume something, the parent will consume something, and the NCI will consume something. So it will be 250 times what here somebody remember that this is coming after this date. So the NCI share will be 20%, 20%, 20%. So 250 times 20% gives me what somebody, 250 times 20% gives me what somebody, it gives me 50 gives me 50, it's supposed to be a deduction. So could you kindly take this minus this plus this minus this, this minus this plus this minus this. Could you kindly give me NCI at DOF? Give me NCI at DOF. Give me NCI at DOF. Give me NCI at DOF. NCI at DOF, NCI at DOF, NCI at DOF, NCI at DOF, NCI at DOF. So this is NCI at uh, date of financial statements. This is what you bring under your NCI. This is what you bring under your NCI. If you can remember, we have some NCI somewhere here. We have got some NCI somewhere here, 4150, 4150. If you look at this solution from Upper Hill, are you able to confirm that the NCI for part one, remember part one of this question was about what year, was about, was about, was about, was about NCI. Is anybody who can confirm if you look at this solution from Upper Hill? From Upper Hill, are you able to confirm? You know, part one of the question, part one of the question was about determining the NCI in S Limited. 
as a 30th June 2022. Six marks. Six marks. Is there somebody who is able to confirm that answer from Upper Hill very fast? Yeah, they're saying yes. So it must be 4150. It must be 4150. It must be 4150. Thank you so much. It must be 4150. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. No, we should not share those things here. We should not share those things here. Don't share them here. That's why you're using up a heel. You need to understand. We can't share them here. Uh, Ross is asking a very good uh, question there. What if the percentage of NCI was uh, increasing? Was increasing? You know, first of all, I'm teaching you when we are moving from control to control increase. Another question will be control to control, but now decreasing. Decreasing. Of course, I would have uh, done what there for your case. Now it would have been 4150, but positive. Eh? But I'll come back to that. Good question. I'll come back to that. Now the last working. So now the last working is about who? The last working is about is about group retained earnings. Please write there for us group retained earnings. Write there for us group retained earnings. 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 Group retained earnings, group retained earnings, group, group retained earnings. So group retained earnings, what do we have? If I'm the one doing group retained earnings, I'll never do that working at all. What I'll do, I'll come here and have it as the balancing figure. I'll have it as the balancing figure. But before I even continue, remember under PPE, do you remember PPE? We had the parents' figure, the subsidiaries figure, and then we had fair value adjustment of land. Or for, they, must be, they must have forgotten that 400, which we got from that table. Are you able to remember that 400? Is anybody who is able to remember that fair value adjustment of land? The 400. Kabisa, yes. So please come and take this plus this plus this. Give me the new PPE figure. Give me the new PPE figure. What do we have here? Financial instruments at a fair value. This will be 6190, 6190. So now I want the PPE figure. The PPE figure. So according to Zulfa, 27505. 27505, like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from there now come to the group's retained earnings. This is a very complicated working. Eh? We don't do it. Doing it will never give you an extra mark. Groups retained earnings. It's a useless working. Very useless. Group retained earnings. Group retained earnings. Group retained earnings. So group retained earnings, you give us the parents retained earnings at DOF. At DOF. Parents retained the earnings at uh, the date of the financial statements. What are we able to see here, really? What are we able to see here, really? So if you look at your financial statements, ladies and gentlemen, according to the parent, the retained earnings of the parent are here. They are 16, 670. 16, 670. Then you come and add here, add here, share of who? Uh, parents, parents, share of pop one. Parents, share of pop two. Pop two. Is there somebody who is able to give us these figures very fast? Is there somebody who is able to give us these figures very fast? Is there somebody who is able to give us these figures very fast? Is there somebody who can give us these figures very fast? Is there somebody who can give us these figures very fast? I have them here. PAP1, the parent's share of PAP1. So PAP1, Rose is telling me that the parents, 80% or 60%, these guys were getting 2,700. How about PAP2? Is there somebody who can give us uh, the parent's share of PAP2? You guys have this figure. I'm so sure that you guys have this figure. $2,700. 
200, eh? 200. Thank you so much. 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 And then now remember, remember that we had a share of what here? Share of, share of associates pop. Share of associates pop. Post acquisition profit. Is there somebody who is able to remember this figure? Is there somebody who is able to remember this figure? Is there somebody who is able to remember this figure? These guys are talking to me. 4,400. Lucy, thanks. Priscilla, thanks. So share of associates pop, 4,400. The 30% of that thing, 4,400. Thank you so much. Now, do we have any unrealized profits? Do we have any unrealized profits on stock? And remember, in the group's retained earnings, you can only bring UPS here if it's a downward transaction, if it's a downward stream. Downward means the parent is the one that sold goods to the subsidiary. If the parent is the one that sold goods to the subsidiary. If the parent is the one that sold goods to the subsidiary, we call that one downward. Downward stream. Downward stream. Downward stream. So downward stream is when we have the parent selling to the subsidiary. Downward. Ah. Uh, they're saying that share of associate pop should be 750. Thank you very much. Please change this. No worries. Just change it. I just want the share of pop. Not the investment in the associate that came here. For, for, that came here. I only want the share of what here? Uh, the parent's share of associate. The whole of it is 750. Thank you very much. So UPS, what have we said about unrealized profit on stock? That these will only be charged here if it's a downward stream. If it's a downward stream, you know, downward is from the parent to the subsidiary. If it's upward stream, it can never come here. So uh, what have we been told? Are you guys able to really see that this was a, a downward stream? Was it a downward stream? Was this a downward stream? Was this a downward stream? Was this a downward stream? Let's see. Let's see. So we are told here, during the year ended, June 2022, P, which is the parent, sold goods to S. So it's a downward stream. And therefore, this fake profit was earned by the parent. And if the fake profit was earned by the parent, we need to remove it from our retained earnings. So he's able to give us this fake profit. Who is able to remember the figure here for the UPS that we computed? 250. So it is a parent which earned this fake profit. We need to deduct it. What if it was an upward stream? If it was an upward stream, what would have we done? I don't know what we would have done, but I know for sure if it's an upward stream, we shall never have that transaction in the group's retained earnings. We shall never have that transaction in the group's retained earnings. And as a gentleman, lastly, we have a share of impairment loss goodwill. Share of impairment loss. That will affect our retained earnings. The bracket here, goodwill. Goodwill. Remember that impairment loss was 250. The impairment loss was 250, right? And remember, ladies and gentlemen, that 80% belongs to who? The parent. 250 times 80%. 250 times 80%, that is 200. So it's also a loss. So we are deducting here. So come there, give us the group's retained earnings. Give us the group's retained earnings. The group's retained earnings. Give us the group's retained earnings. Groups retained the earnings. Are you able to get that figure? Groups retained the earnings. Groups retained the earnings. Are you able to get that figure? This plus this plus this plus this minus this minus that. What figure are we getting, somebody here? Group retained the earnings. What figure are we getting here? What figure are we getting here? 19,870. So this 19,870, you know now where to fix it, isn't it? I hope you know where to fix it under the equity. So go to the equity and fix it there. 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 So then could you kindly do me a favor? Is there somebody who is able to give me the total assets now? Please come and consolidate all these. Consolidate all these. Put them together. And then please come and give me the total assets. 
give me the total assets. Kindly give me the total assets. Consolidate now everything. Give me the total assets figure. Somebody, I know you guys are bright. Give me the total assets figure. 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 Yes, I will do it. Total assets figure. Total assets figure. I'm being given a figure of 82. 370. Total assets figure. I'm being given a figure of 82. 370 like that. Thank you very much. So please go to the equity and liabilities. Of course, we have the retained earnings here. 19. 19,870. So please go to your equity and liabilities. You add all the figures. Total equity and the total liabilities. Just add all of them. All of them. And see whether you shall be able. Of course, I've got other liability elements here, which I've rubbed here. But I know you guys are bright students. You can trace them in your book. You can trace those liabilities. And of course, if possible, try to add them up, like the deferred assets or the deferred uh, tax. Put it up together. Put them up together. And then you come and they give me the total figure of equity and liabilities by adding up all of them. By adding up all of them, what are we getting here? 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 For the total equity and liabilities. For the total equity and liabilities. What are they able to get? For the total equity and liabilities. Total equity and liabilities for the group. Total equity and liabilities for the group. They are not talking to me. They are not talking to me. I don't know who they would want to talk to in this afternoon, this great afternoon. I don't know who they would want to talk to in this great afternoon. For total equity and liabilities, what are they able to get really? For total equity and liabilities, 81, 220. Is there anything that we may have left outside here? Is there anything that we may have left outside there? 81 to 20, is there anything that we may have left outside here? Is there anything that we may have left outside there? Please check. First of all, we have ordinary share capital, 20,000. You have that figure of 20,000 ordinary share capital. Share premium, do you have 4,000? Ah, I know why. Retained earnings, we have 19, 870. And then we have the OCE. Other components of equity. That is what we forgot. Just put it there. 1150. I'll be able to show you how to calculate it. OCE. Other components of equity. 1150. 1150. Other components of equity. 1150. Other components of equity. 1150. That's quite a, 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 a nice working. Other components of equity. 1150. Great, great, great. Other components of equity OCE, 1150. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from there, what else do we have? OCE is very important. Then we have done controlling interest, 4150. 4150, 4150. Vis-a-vis, -vis. in this case here, we have, uh, I know you have this, 10% loan notes. Are you able to see 14,000? 14,000, 14,000. All right. Then we have our deferred taxation, 820, 8 at 220, 8 at 20, 8 at 20. Then we have trade payables over 8, uh, 80 and 8, 800, current tax over 2380. So then when we, what we talk about this OCE, this OCE, this OCE, this OCE, this OCE, ladies and gentlemen, the OCE is a very easy thing to calculate, really. It applies whenever we have capital reductions. Our NCI reduced. Our NCI reduced. Our NCI reduced. Our NCI reduced. So when you look at uh, our NCI reduction, NCI reduction, NCI reduction is how much? What was the NCI reduction that we calculated with you up there? The NCI reduction is there somebody who is able to give us the NCI reduction. 4150. So we have 4150 there, 4150 there, 4150 there. It's NCI reduction. And then, of course, we'll come and consider this with the cash consideration. The cash consideration, cash paid for this additional. The cash paid for this additional. 
additional shares that the parent took up, for the additional shares that the parent uh, took up, okay, for the additional shares that the parent took up, how much do we pay here? How much? It is 3,000, isn't it? It is 3,000. It is 3,000. If you remember, this additional 20%, the additional 20%, the additional 20%, the additional 20%, we paid 3,000. We paid 3,000. We paid 3,000. We paid 3,000. So 3,000. So in this case here, yeah, then there is a difference of what year? Uh, 1150 like that. It's a gain on us. It's a gain on us. Because in this case, ladies and gentlemen, we paid 3,000, but these guys were able to forfeit. Were able to forfeit 4150. So 11.50 is a positive equity component, right? So you'll go to under equity, you will have there other components of equity, OCE, other components of equity. We have 11 watt year. 11, so this is normally applicable whenever there is capital watt year reduction, whenever there is capital reduction, whenever there is capital reduction. So now I believe that uh, after you put this OCE, everything else now should be able to really balance. Is that the case? After you put the OCE, is everything now agreeing? Is everything agreeing after putting the OCE down? Yes, yes, yes. So thank you very much. So many students are telling me, Mwalimu, that you need to put this on YouTube. Yes, I'll do it. And of course, I expect you guys then to do what you are to subscribe to this channel. Very important. And most importantly, please ensure that you, because I know I've got very many guests here, have many guests here. Welcome to RCM Online College. We study together. We do these serious things together. AFR. Do it today. Do it today. <laughs> do it today. So for those of you who want to make inquiries about uh, our courses, this is our number. 0798-9499 or 0719-525-1000 like that. So that is it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you guys have enjoyed.